or people who are excited about learning, who are excited about um, their, their lives, excited about their, their country. Um, it must be that they are people who are listened to, that there are people who listen to them, who pay attention to them, who, uh, uh, who let them ask questions, who let them, you know, um, explore ideas and things. Um, they're not afraid of other people. Um, they're not sullen and angry. They're not, they're not herded around, you know, like the way that people are here in, in, in the public schools. I just know that the schools that we saw uh, were amazing. They were, they were brilliant. They were great. And I think it's one of the signs that I see uh, that gives me hope for the world. There are a lot of signs that we can look at in the world today and see. We could probably conclude there doesn't seem to be much or little hope. But when, when I see that kind of commitment on the part of deeply religious people who are, who are devoted to Allah, who are devoted to uh, education, who are devoted to the students, who are devoted to the country, and who want life to be better not only for themselves but for the whole world, it's uh, just uh, something that uh, uh, I find uh, to be, as I indicated, a sign of hope. Uh, not only for the people of Turkey, not only for the Islamic communities around the world, but for all of us. The evenings are marked by pleasant dinners as the days were spent traveling around according to the heavy schedule. There were many people all over Turkey who opened their doors and hearts to these guests and welcomed them with smiling faces and hosted them with respect. It was the last evening of the American group in Turkey an unforgettable surprise was expecting Mr. and Mrs. Boyd's arrival that night in the house they were visiting. We're ready to leave for the evening and we're standing out in the hallway and we were all saying our goodbyes, all of this through a translator, and I asked the translator to say to uh, the daughter, there were two precious uh, children, an eight-year-old daughter and a five-year-old, and I asked if he would tell uh, the daughters that Tom and I are going to be grandparents in a couple of weeks and we're expecting our first granddaughter. We have three grandsons and we're ready for a granddaughter and we're real excited about that. And this child, the, her face just beamed and she ran back in the house uh, through the front door and she, she brought a doll back. And I had seen the doll in the evening and her mother had told me that that was her, one of her favorite toys and, and she pulled, pulled the doll out off the cabin and brought it out and handed it to me and through the translator um, actually I have the doll <laughs> here in this house I should go get it uh, through the translator uh, said this is for the new baby and tears just started running down my face because I realized that this child was giving she had already learned the Gulen principles she took her favorite toy and gave it to an unborn child that she will never meet that she doesn't know to me a stranger that had only spent a few hours in her home. She'll never see me again. And, um, and it was so generous and she was so excited to give it away. Mrs. Boyd did not want to accept the present of the little girl because it was so precious to her. But upon the warning of the translator that it would be inappropriate to reject, she had to accept it with feelings of deep admiration. So I, I accepted the doll, and then when I came back to America, I, I took the doll to my daughter when she had had her baby, and I said, this, this doll belongs to Lily, which is the name of our grandchild, and I said, but I'm going to keep it until she's eight years old, uh, because I want to tell her the story about the little girl in Turkey, who will be 16 at that point, who gave this doll to her, and I hope through my grandchild uh, and uh, this child in Turkey that this bridge, even though these two children will most likely never meet, that there will be a bridge started between my grandchild, who's just now a few weeks old, and this child who's eight, uh, 
that as my grandchild receives this doll and hears the story, that she'll understand that she has a spirit sister on, on, in another land far away uh, who gave her a gift totally out of, out of the generosity of her heart. And maybe that'll be the beginning of something. To me, that story is the symbol of the Gulen movement. What brought them to Turkey was their friends thousands of miles away from this land. They had accepted the invitation of a university student, or a friend who worked voluntarily for an NGO, or even someone he met in a shop. And they came to Anatolia. In their own expressions, they tasted many new things, and had many spiritual experiences that they never encountered before. No one tried to impose any ideas on them. Nothing was dictated. Moreover, many things were even left unexplained. They were only shown a picture. A unique picture decorated finally with love, tolerance, and sincerity for years. One of the things that very much impressed me in our, um, in our journey to Turkey was that uh, of how committed the Turkish Muslims were that were part of our group to their daily times of prayer and uh, I was uh, on the one hand surprised by that because we had a very very uh, rigid schedule that we were on and we were always on the go <coughs> uh, and yet uh, the Turkish Muslims and all the Muslims that were part of our, our group found time took time to to be faithful to their and that helps some but really what affected me was his presence we could not exchange much because we did not share each other's language and yet this man had a presence and then he showed up on our bus like a day later and I just immediately went to him and couldn't talk um, and he couldn't talk to me but we just stood there. I remember standing there beside him and both of us feeling this sense of grace. Whoever he was, I don't even know his name. I think through their beautiful example and their beautiful practice of faith, they make others aware of the truth. I can say that when I first saw prayer being held in the mosque, it opened my eyes in a way that I had never expected. And I realized the reverence and I realized the beauty of that prayer and thought, yeah, I had a lot to work, a lot of work to do with my own prayer. I noticed the um, spirituality is not separate and apart from the daily life. It's interwoven into everything that they do. And therefore, um, there is a reverence, uh, there are beautiful manners, and there is a focus that everything in life has a meaning and a purpose. And we shouldn't waste any time. I've learned from them that um, everything comes from God. Everything is a blessing, uh, good or bad. And that the importance of spirituality in everyday life is monumental. And through their example, this has become very obvious to me. There's one other word I've been taught that I, that I, I use now often. And it's the word inshallah. Am I saying it correctly? And Rumi said this about that. He said, some people work and become wealthy. Others do the same and remain poor. Marriage fills one with energy and drains another. So don't trust ways because they change. A means, something in the middle, flails about like a donkey's tail. Always use the gratitude phrase, if God wills. <laughs>